Hello, my gentle and, of course, very modern apes. Today, we're going to be doing something a little goofy. We're going to be reading comments from the haters. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, there's not that many, actually, on my videos and on my channel, which is why, occasionally, we will be skipping to other channels who are covering my videos in order to, to glean some, some hate, to get some, um, some, some real mean jabs in. I'm doing this video because this week I'm going to the AABAs, I'm going to be presenting a poster there, so I don't have a lot of time to do anything super rigorous, so I figured that's what we would do. We're just gonna, we're gonna read some funny comments, and then we're gonna call it a day. And then next week I'll be showing you the contents of my poster that I presented, which is of course rooted in my master's thesis work, which I know you're all very thrilled to hear about. I also like the idea of reading mean comments and then making money through AdSense by reading those mean comments on YouTube. I think that's just a fun concept. Your hate quite literally fills up my wallet, making me stronger. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to share this video around and help me make even more money off of mean people saying rude things in my YouTube comments, feel free. We're gonna keep this uh, to the safe for work meme comments because you won't believe this, but as a woman on the internet, sometimes these things get a little brisque. There is a reason one of my muted words is feet. And there's plenty of mean stuff to go around, so if you like this video, uh, let me know in the comments in a nice way, and maybe I'll make another one and it'll be funny and we'll get laughs at it and we'll make money off of the haters, as it were. Sorry, but your presentation style made me switch off after 60 seconds. Good riddance. Lady, be quiet. Make me, coward. My dear girl, you think a few skulls on a bookshelf make you an expert? You have a long way to go. I wouldn't classify myself as an expert just because I don't have my PhD yet, although my BSA and my Masters of Research do make me a little bit more qualified than your average Joe when it comes to talking about things like primates and human evolution. But more importantly, I don't have a few skulls. And that comment is spoken like someone who perhaps has no skulls at all. Who is the bigger fool? The fool? or the one who argues with the fool. I never said I wasn't a fool. I'm just less foolish than some. It is unbelievable the number of people who claim to educated and believe this girl is right when she only has speculation, and they are subjects that creationists have already settled. Sad you think these old lies are new. This was in one of my top five reasons why Young Earth Creationism is impossible video, and is, yes, very astute comment. So it should be quite easy then to provide sources, since they're so old hat as, uh, as negatives against Young Earth Creationism, since I'm sure they've been done to death, right? Boring BS, as if she was there. She wasn't. Uh, Bert is right though, I was not present <laughs> when the Cambrian was occurring. Nor was I there for the Permian, or the Cretaceous, or the Miocene. He's right, I should have been more forthcoming that I wasn't around 20 million years ago. <laughs> if Bert were in charge, we would simply have to throw out every court case ever, because the cops and investigators who are trying to suss out what happened in any given murder case were not actually present for the murder. Well done, Erica. Keep up the good work. From Satan. Truly abiding commentary from Joe Kerr. You know what they say. We live in a society. It's not a joke. I also like that in Joe Kerr's world, uh, myself and Satan were on a first name basis. The devil's top agent is, of course, a bespectacled 26 year old PhD student who wears button-ups and plays a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I guess that does make sense when you think about it. So far, your five topic, I single-handedly own them. No ignore, science versus science. I crush you. You are welcome. Now move on. Well, I can't argue with the sound beat down like that. I guess we better shut it down, boys. Her voice is excruciating. 
you know, I get this one a lot. The, uh, your voice is high-pitched and nasally and kind of irritating. I've had this voice since I was 12. It never dropped during puberty, so I'm quite used to hearing it. Um, I don't care. If all you can do is complain about my pipes, then I suspect you don't have anything to say about my actual arguments. So we'll leave that there. Where are the monkey fossils? Good question, Vanessa. Most monkey fossils are going to be found no earlier than the Eocene, and they're going to be found primarily in places like the Fayum in Egypt initially, and then they're going to spread out, and then they're going to be found pretty much everywhere, especially if we're considering monkeys, anything that is a catarine or potentially a haplorine primate. Blah, blah, blah. That's a given. Literally destroyed, absolutely annihilated, decimated, bulldozed over and forced into early retirement by uh by Jill here. I do talk a lot though. That one that one he's right on. Dr. James Tour, Rice University. Dr. Stephen Meyer, Oxford. Why yes, some young earth creationists and some intelligent design proponents do in fact have PhDs from universities. Your biggest folly here was forgetting to name drop the almighty and powerful Nathaniel Jensen with his degree from Harvard. The real thing here is you don't want to play a numbers game with people with degrees who support your position because evolutionary theory is gonna win on that one. Hey, if you want to share your ancestry with a turnip, that's on you. I like this idea that objective truth is something that you choose, right? Like it's something that you can kind of just pick, like you're choosing your Pokemon starter. It's like, okay, if you want to hitch your wagon, you know, to the turnip ancestry, uh, <laughs> to the turnip ancestry horse, be my guess. It's like picking Bulbasaur. Bro, Bulbasaur is kind of turnip-like, actually. That's a pretty good analogy. You do not get to pick what is true and what is false. It either is objectively supported by data or it is not objectively supported by data. But also there's the little snafu here where like, I'm not sure what they mean by share ancestry with a turnip. Like we share a common ancestry with turnips around the time that the animal kingdom split from the plant kingdom, which would have been several hundred millions, if actually not billions of years ago. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit in the past, but we don't like descend from turnips. We aren't like the mighty turnip sapiens, you know? Why is a woman talking about science? You know, I'm surprised Mike actually had time to post this. Not getting laid is usually a full-time job. So there are female incels. Interesting. I'll have you know I'm engaged. So not anymore. You lost all your debates versus Monkey for Banana, yet here you are again. Does Monkey for Banana have a solution to the heat problem? Never mind. This woman has no idea what she is talking about. God help any children victimized by her closed and twisted mind. Honey, yes, of course, they're idiocy propagandists. Every thinking person knows this. But you don't really think the sort of person who would believe their nonsense is going to land on your channel and see the light, do you? Oh, dang, EMS. Well, I don't know that I would say that. I mean... Edit. Seeing a couple of comments, I see there are some people deconverting from that loony brand of Christian fundamentalism who do, in fact, claim to benefit from videos such as yours. So I stand corrected. Oh good. Thank you, EMS. This girl might be too young to know or realize evolution has zero evidence. <sighs> Sir, I'm 26 years old. I think I can determine what evidence is good evidence for an idea. I'm glad you guys went after Gibbon. I saw through her from the beginning. She comes off sweet, and she is a very intelligent woman, but she is a wolf in sheep's clothing. As stated, she seeks these atheist groups out. She spends her time fighting against the god that gave her life.
I love when I get characterized as some, like, beguiling, duplicitous femoid out here repping evolution at the expense of, like, general theism. That's not what I do. That's never been what I do. I dislike pseudoscience, so I dislike young earth creationism, so I duke it out and post up with that concept instead. As for seeking out atheist groups, this was actually a comment under coverage of my interview with Seth Andrews, the thinking atheist. I was invited to the Faithless Forum. I didn't ask to go. They invited me to come. I was happy to do so. But if you want to see me on non-atheist channels, like maybe non-atheists should invite me on their channels. But also appreciate the wolf in sheep's clothing thing. Like I have to be characterized by a lot of these people as like secretly kind of a jerk when in reality, like I'm only a jerk if someone is a jerk to me first. I, I don't tend to throw the first stone. I tend to retaliate and retaliate in a very sassy, harsh way. But you know, I have to be villainized because otherwise it's just people being upset that they're being called out by like a young woman who is in academia, if that makes sense. And before you say being a woman has nothing to do with it, Oh, God sick, sweetie, that man is not into you. He likes other men, sorry. That thought alone gives me the creeps. Ha, she's so giggling and shy. I was wondering who she was crushing on. These ladies trying to defend evolution, they don't do it for the same reason the guys do. I won't explain it because it would be a study in itself, but they are not passionate for evolution. I can guarantee you that. It's money or a guy they're into. All of them. With one exception, Emma. She loves the devil. That's her gay man crush. I love you guys so much. Thanks for all you do. God bless. Fellow duplicitous femoids, I've got a step-by-step -step program for you to be able to attain the two things that all women want. Getting a man and getting money. Step one, you're going to want to go to college. Now going to college is imperative even if you have to take out a loan it's fine, we're gonna be making big bucks later in the step process. So just go ahead and take out a loan, go to college. Step two, meet a man. After you've met that man, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and over the course of the summer, get a job working at like a veterinary clinic with a coworker who's a fervent young earth creationist and through a series of events, including getting on a couple of subreddits, you're gonna to wanna to create a YouTube channel that covers evolutionary content and maybe some like anti young earth creationist stuff. Trust me, this is going to make us big money later and it's really, really important that people think that you actually like it. So let's continue with the next step. I, I forgot the step numbers, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's hard for me to remember, you know, the step numbers uh, because, you know, my brain is so small and female, you know, smaller than a man's skull. This is why part of the money making process is actually uh, getting money from men instead of making it ourselves. Anyways, the next step is going to be go and get that degree, right? Make sure that the degree was in some kind of STEM field, like, you know, maybe pre-professional animal science um, with, a, you know, minors in like biology or anthropology, you really want to make sure that um, a lot of the classes you're taking are like chemistry and physics so that you can trick the boys into thinking that you're interested. The next step is going to be going and getting your master's. Now make sure that that master's degree is overseas so it's more expensive. This is all about making sure that you're going into plenty of debt. Now the next step after that uh, is going to be you're going to want to go ahead and get that master's degree. Trust me, it's all going to fall into place. Uh, this is all going to end in getting a man and also um, pretending to be interested in evolution theory is going to lead to a lot of money making. Uh, the next step is going to be get engaged. You see? You see how it's all coming together? Um, now, I have here that getting engaged is, is to like a guy that you like uh, and has nothing to do with, with that evolutionary YouTube channel, but that's for you it might be different. Um, but the next step, that, that this is key, you're going to want to apply for a PhD and then you're gonna get married. Um, and then after you get married, you're gonna get the PhD, right? And like all the while the YouTube channel's still going, people are still thinking that you're interested uh, in evolution, e even though you know the, the degrees that you've gotten, they do have to do with evolution. That's all a part of the long con YouTube channel to make people think that you're interested. Um, and after you get the PhD, the profits just roll in. Remember, ladies, as a woman, you know, you want scientists. Boys like science, girls like scientists, and every woman that's ever gone into science has been exclusively to get the attention of a guy, uh, and I, th that's just the way that it works, so. Now, I read this comment to just about every one of my colleagues, men and women, and they 
just about busted a gut laughing. The, the idea that pretending to be interested in evolution is somehow a part of this convoluted plan to make money and like, I guess, cuck a guy is insane to me, but also absolutely hysterical. You love to see the you love to see the unnecessary digs at Emma there, although uh, Emma saw this comment, I made sure that he posted on Twitter, tagged her, and she thought it was pretty funny. So, you know, y you gotta get the laughs where you can. But yeah, I can't believe that, it, you know, this is the guy that cracked my code. Um, quite clearly, this is all just a clever ruse to make a ton of money. I am very wealthy, of course, off my YouTube channel and, you know, being a graduate student all according to plan. When our Heavenly Father finally meet Erica, he will tell her, Erica, you were destroyed countless times on debates, yet you rejected me. Depart from me. Joker's on fire today. This guy just simply doesn't miss. I'm constantly getting annihilated by Joker's quips. Of course, you know, the, the grammar could have been better a couple of times there. Nice for Sona. You son of a bitch.